fight. Having his head covered, dishonored his head. They said he dishonored his head. So when y'all got y'all head covered while the scriptures being brought out, we have prophesied y'all dishonoring Christ. Yeah. Hey, so guess what? Give me um give me first John five and three. He said what? listening here read that again the book of revelation chapter 21 verse 10 uh -huh. and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city so it's the great city this city that we living in now the condition that our people live in now and the slums and the ghettos this ain't the city that we we um we we keeping god laws for we keeping God laws for this city that's being explained in this verse right here. Read. The holy Jerusalem. The holy Jerusalem. Because ain't nothing holy. This is sin city. This whole, this whole universe is set up off sin, keeping us um, down south because they get to run their kingdom off us being in sin. But when we come back to the God laws and start keeping his laws as a nation of people, the so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans, this is the city that's going to be granted to us. Read. Descending out of heaven from God. So this city going to be descending out of heaven from the Most High God, the God of the Bible. Read. Having the glory of God. Uh-huh. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone. So a jasper stone. If you see a jasper, it's real shiny. Like when you see diamonds, they real shiny. They look good. So this city going to look good because this is the city. It won't be all this trash. You won't see none of this in this kingdom right here. This is the kingdom that we must come back to and rule. We ain't trying to rule this right here. We trying to rule the kingdom that God set up for us. So y'all understand that. Did he go over that y'all Israel? Y'all understand y'all Israel? All right, did he, did he explain what's required of y'all? What's required of y'all? Keep God lost. Right. So give me um, 1 Corinthians 11. Bring it out. We finna see if y'all gonna keep one of God's laws. And we know y'all y'all probably not familiar with it. We already know it, but it's it's easy. It's easy to keep God's laws. Ain't nothing grievous about keeping God's laws. Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. Come on. But I will have you know. He said, I'm gonna have you to know this. So we're gonna have you to understand what's being brought out. So you will know, once this come out, I need to refrain from doing it. Read. That the head of every man is Christ. So we understand that. This going over the chain of command. The head of every man, the head of y'all too, is Christ. That's right. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. And we are the head of all the women. When you get married, you the head of your household. You are the parents of your household. Read. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ. Even Christ has a head. His head is God. So you got God. Christ, man, woman. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. So it says every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Read. Dishonoreth his head. So who is man head? Now who is man head? Remember you got God, Christ, then man. Now God, Christ, man, then the woman. So who is man head? Christ. Christ. You right. Christ. Because God is Christ's head. Read that again everywhere. Every man having his, every man praying or prophesying. So right now, we're coming out of the Bible, which is nothing, it's filled with nothing but prophecy. It's filled with the, the so-called nation that's ruling now, destruction, and it's also filled with us being in rulership. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. They said he dishonored his head. So when y'all got y'all head covered while the scriptures being brought out, we have prophesied y'all dishonoring Christ. Yeah. That, hey, so guess what? Give me um give me first John five and three. They said what? Yeah, yeah. Give me give me first John five and three because that's that's a sign that you uh -huh. God. You really love God. And we all have that spirit that dwells in us. We all have a godly spirit that dwells in us. We want to do right. But guess what? They put us in the ghettos. They force us to, to sell drugs. They force us to, to, to sleep with every woman around. You know what I'm saying? Do slavery. They, they do these things. They implement. They've been st having studies on us before we was born, on our people. So get that. 
the book of first John, chapter five and verse three. Uh-huh. For this is the love of God. For this is the love of God. Read. That we keep his commandment. His commandment was to not for a man to not have his head covered. So when you keep his commandments, that's expression love. Now let me ask you, because you got the cross on. What what does that cross symbolize? Where does that cross come from? What does that cross mean to you? Why do why do you wear that cross? You already you got it. Huh? It symbolized Christ? So they say. Who taught you that? The Bible. The Bible taught you that? What scripture can I go and it teach you about the cross? You can tell because it ain't in there, bro. But we're going to get the scripture that actually tell you what that cross symbolized to our people. You know, once we was enslaved on one of these pictures, once we was enslaved, the first thing that um the other nations did right here look at this picture what that is right there what that is right there that's a cross that's the first thing that they came with ha holding up the cross and taking everything about us our nationality raping robbing us because this is their symbol you do know that more people than other than christ died on the cross right that's how they killed it. that's how they killed back in the ancient time but read that the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 18. Come on. What profit is the grave in image? Read it again. What profit is the grave in image? So what does that graven image of the cross profit you, brother? Do it put money in your pocket? Do it do it do it help provide for your family? Do it do it save you? Can if, if somebody start a shootout right now, would that cross save your life? So what does it profit? It don't profit nothing. Read, that's a graven image, right? because they hung Christ on it. That's a graven image. So it says, this Rebecca 2 saying, what profit the graven image? Read. That the makers thereof have graven it. That the person that, gra that made it, graven it. Because they created, you have people that created that. God didn't create that. Read. That the molten image. The molten image, because it's molded in silver or it's molded in gold. It's covered by gold. Read. And a teacher. And what does this cross teach? Of lies. It teaches right. lies. Right. Because like I said, in this picture right here, this image, it sh it's showing that the, the other nations, in all affliction, they killing us in these pictures. Every picture you see, they killing us. The so-called blacks are being killed. The so-called Native Americans are being killed. The Hispanics, they all are persecuting us and afflicting us with harm, but they got the cross. They got the cross doing it. So sub subconsciously, we think that, hey, this cross is a good thing. What does scripture way tell us to throw the cross away? Isaiah 30? Give me Isaiah 30 and 22. And now he told you that this cross teach lies. Now he's going to tell you what to do with the cross. The Everything book. can be found in the Bible, bro. Everything. It don't matter what it is. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, and verse 22. Come on. No. Ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver. He said you shall defile them. Cast them away. It's one that said cast away. Read, read on. As the ornament of thy molten images of gold. Uh-huh. Thou shalt cast them away. Thou shalt do what? Thou shalt cast them away. Hey, he said you should throw that thing away, man. Because it don't profit you nothing, right? It can't save you. It can't, it can't protect you. It can't provide nothing for you, so why wear it if it's, if it's a teacher of lies? Right there, that cross, let me tell you another thing about that cross. That cross, when they see that cross on your, on your neck, they know you are one with them and keeping our people oppressed. You agree with everything, every bylaw, every, 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 um, Everything that goes against the Bible, they know you are agreeing to it. And that's how they do research on our people. They see how many of our people are going to vote. And still, there is no change. They see how many of our people are going to keep continuing to do the things that they call right and disobey God's laws. That's right. Because 
you, I, I'm quite sure y'all brothers, y'all brothers wanna wanna do something with y'all sales. Y'all wanna be productive. Y'all don't want to, y'all don't wanna be labeled as just being niggas. Cause that's what they see us as. They see us as niggas. Right. But you gotta change your ways. We gotta always think about how can we change our ways. Give me um give me that in Psalms 19 and, and verse 7. We gotta we gotta convert the way that we think. Because like I said, you was taught that the cross was alright. You was taught that. We was taught a lot of things. We was taught shooting our brothers down in the street is alright. If a nigga cross me, I'ma cross. If a nigga do harm to me, I'ma do harm to him. We was taught these things. But they ain't right according to the Bible. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Uh-huh. The law of the Lord is perfect. So every time we read, it's going to be about the law. That shows you how important God cares about us following his laws. Read. Converting the soul. So these laws, once they imp once you start implementing them and doing them, they're going to convert your mind. They're going to convert you to think opposite of the way we've been taught. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure. So the testimony of the Lord is sure because we know if we keep God's commandments, we know we get eternal life. Read. Making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. Give me Proverbs 28 and 13. Give me Proverbs 28 verse 13. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13. Come on. Oh. He that covers his sins. So he that covers his sins when you try to go into hiding your sins. That's why we, uh, we we tell our brothers, hey, confess your sins. That's the only way God going to hear you. That's how you start converting your mind. You change your mind, start doing what God tell you to do. And guess what? The most high God going to see that it's fit for you to become prosperous. Read. Shall not prosper. Read it from the top. He that covereth his sins. He that cover his sins shall not prosper. There ain't no prospering in that. Guess what? If you shoot a brother down, it's only so so long before somebody else is gonna shoot you down. If you sell some 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 um some um lace weed to a brother, it's only so many amount of days or years come by before somebody eventually sell you the same thing. So ain't no good come to the, the ones that's occupied and evil. Read on. But whoso confesses, but whoso confesses, confess your sin. That's what we got to do. Start confessing our sin to the Most High God. Read. And forsake yourself. And forsake them. Turn away from them. No longer take part in sinning. Read. Shall have mercy. That's who going to have mercy. Y'all do want the Most High God to have mercy on y'all, right? Because guess what? I'm sure it's plenty of times and situations that y'all have been caught up in that y'all life could have been taken. But he set this day up for both of y'all to come from over there, which I was doing, and to listen to the true word of God. Right. Because the pastors ain't doing it. Right. The pastors are not doing their job. The only person that can do the job of this Bible is the Most High God with us. But you first have to do what you're supposed to have, what, what God commanded you to do. The laws of God. Give me Ecclesiastes 12 and 12. Because this is your main purpose for being on earth. It's not waking up doing what you want to do. Right. It's not waking up on the Sabbath day, which is God's holy day, coming to the car wash, washing your cars off. Yeah. It's not smoking that, 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 um, that line of crack, or shooting up crack. It's not doing it. That, that ain't going to profit you nothing. Read what, what you got. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 13. This is your main purpose for being in existence. Read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. This is the conclusion of the whole matter. If you don't leave knowing nothing else, this is what you need to get an understanding of right here. Read. Fear God. First, you must fear God. When you fear somebody, you're going to do whatever they tell you to do because you fear the judgment that comes behind not doing what they commanded you to do. Read. And keep his command. And do what? Keep his command. Everything is about Israel keeping God's command. We must come back to the laws of God. That's right. That's the most important thing of the Bible. With y'all knowing y'all Israel, God requires y'all to keep his laws. Because if you sin, if you keep on in the midst of sin, hey, you disregard everything that's being brought out to you right now, and you're like, hey, I'm still going to do what I want to do. Give me Romans 6 and 23. Yeah. This, this right here is going to be your downfall. Bring it up. 
This right here is going to eventually be you one day. This and, and this goes for each and every one of us. This ain't just, you know, us directing the word towards y'all. This goes for each and every brother you see out here that's standing up for the word of God. Read the book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 43. Come on. For the wages of sin. So the payment for being in the midst of sin, read, is death. Is death. That's what's going to come. And when the most high comes, give me Isaiah 66. And verse, start with verse 15, 14, somewhere up in there. This is how God going to come back. Nobody want to see the day when the most high come back. Like, like Tupac said, only God can judge me. You, you really don't want to see God. You don't want to see God in judgment day. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 15. Come on. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. He going to come with what? The Lord will come with fire. Hey, you remember last time God situated and get in order with the laws, statutes, and commandments that God commanded us to do immediately. That's right. The scripture said, are you supposed to make haste to keep God's laws? Read. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. Uh-huh. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. Like a whirlwind. You don't want to see God coming like that and you ain't got your house in order. You ain't keeping God's laws. Read. To render his anger. To do what? To render his anger. God angry with us. God is looking down upon earth and he is angry with the nation of Israel. Because we are not keeping the laws that he gave us to keep. Right. Read. To render his anger with fury. It's payback. Payback. God is coming to render his anger with fury. He upset. You know what type of thoughts go through your mind when you're real upset? You you think about killing everything. You you want to really destroy some stuff. That's the same type of God we serve. He made us in his image. So guess what? The way that we deal, a lot of the times, when it's righteous, God deal the same way with us. That same way. Read on. And his rebuke with flames of fire. His rebuke going to be with flames of fire. That's it on that. So that's why it's important to keep God's law. Right. This ain't no scare tactic. This is a promise that God is going to keep. He keep his promises. Right. This is a promise that he going to keep if we don't get our house in order, if we don't keep his law, statutes, and commandments, he going to grant us death. That's why it says what the wages of sin is death. So now, give me Acts 3 and 19. Now y'all brothers gotta y'all brothers gotta reform y'all mind, reform y'all thinking, and start going into the stages of repentance. We gotta repent as a nation, cause God punished us as a nation. Hold it, hold it. Give me Amos three. God punished us. He don't pun. He punish us individually, but as a nation, in order to get the kingdom, He punish us as a nation. So we gotta come back. That's why we need y'all two brothers on this side. We don't need to lose y'all to the street. We lose enough brothers and sisters to the street. On accident, we lose enough brothers and sisters, kids, on accident in the streets. So now we got to come together as the nation of Israel, repentant nation of Israel, and God will grant us the kingdom. God will make us prosper on this earth. Read the book of Amos, chapter 3, and verse 1. Come on. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. Who he spoke the word against? Oh, children of Israel. This is the whole nation of Israel. The 12 tribes. That's the whole nation of Israel. The children of Israel. Read. Which I brought up of the land of Egypt. Because God was, that's how you know God is for us. He destroyed the Egyptian army in the Red Sea. Closed the Red Sea up on them, drowned them. For all for the sake of saving Israel because they start keeping the laws and statutes and commandments as a nation. He didn't He didn't rescue one or two or three of them. He, re, he rescued the whole nation of Israel that was in the Egyptian captivity. He, he, he rescued all of them together. Read. Say, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. He said, I only known Israel out of all the nations that I created. He created 18. Separate us, it's only 17 nations outside of us. He said, I don't know them 17. I created them, but I created them on the purpose of for, for them to be our slaves. For us to rule over them. 
for us to govern them. But go. since we disobeyed his commandment, he flipped the script on us. Read. Therefore, I will punish you. He gonna punish you. I will punish you. That's why the white, the so-called white man, that's why the Arab man, that's why the, the Chinese man, the Japanese man, they don't identify with the curses. They ain't the first five last hired. They ain't in the ghettos and the slums because he only punished Israel and Israel only. Read. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. He only are punishing us because we are in the midst of iniquity. Read. Can two walk together except they be agreed? So that's why we don't need to merge with the other nations. Because they don't go by the laws and statutes and commandments. They don't, they don't agree with what God said do and what God said not to do. Only the nation of Israel. Go back to where I had you to hold. The book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. So we got to start thinking better. We got to start thinking positive thoughts. We got to start, start coming out of the mindset of, of how we was taught all our life, which was wrong, and come back to what this Bible command us to do. That's We're right. about to go through repentance right now. This is what you guys got to start having your mind on. Read. Out. Repent ye therefore and be converted. It says repent ye therefore. Turn from your wicked ways. Come out of the midst of sin. Read. That your sins may be blotted out. That your sins may be blotted out. Read. When the times of refreshing shall come. You know what the time of refreshing is? That Isaiah 66 that I, that I read to you earlier. God gonna come by fire. That's going to be the time of refreshing right now because this place that we in now, Babylon, spiritual Babylon, this is spiritual Babylon the Great. This place has to be destroyed. Because ain't no help for us in, this, in this, this, the conditions that we in, it ain't no help. We've been marching, no answer. We've been voting, no answer. We've been, we even went to the furthest thing to, to where we started bail against the other nations and start trying to come together to kill them. That didn't last. The Black Panther movement, Martin, Martin Luther King, those brothers, I commend them because they stood up and they had a, a passion and love for our people, but they didn't come with the solution out of the Bible. Right. And that's why they was destroyed for lack of knowledge. Our people have been trying everything but the laws of God. So God tell us to repent, read. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Uh huh. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So that's what we're trying to get y'all brothers to change our mindset and repent. To, to take off the cross, throw the cross away. To take your head covering off. Uncover your head. Y'all got some, some desire for serving God, but y'all mind ain't all the way there yet. Y'all got a little bit more work to do. We all, give me that in Titus 3. We all was sometimes foolish. We all was in the midst of sin. Nobody up here wasn't in sin. Nobody up here. We got a lot of brothers that, that come out of the street. So if we can do it, guess what? Y'all brothers can do it as well. That's, That's why we come to the streets. Hold that. Give me, Levit give me um, Luke 14 and 23. That's the commandment of God. Bring it out. God command us to come to the street and teach our people. That's why we set up in the hoods. That's why we go to the ghettos. That's why we go to the projects. Because that's, we know that's where our people at. Because right. we come out of the hood. Right. Still in the hood. We in the projects. We see y'all as ourselves. We, when we see y'all, we don't see y'all as niggas. We see y'all as Christ. Right. We all have Christ's blood running through us. We got to start acting like it though. Read. The book of Luke, chapter 14 and verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, uh -huh. Go out into the highways and hedges. So we are God's servants. Y'all are God's servants. He can, this commandment is for y'all too. But y'all first must convert y'all minds, repent, and start keeping God's laws. And come on this side and teach the word to your other brothers and sisters. Read. And compel them. To and come compel in. them. Right now when I'm going through these scriptures and I'm telling you to turn from your wicked ways and death, it's going to be upon you. The wages of sin is death. That's me compelling you, telling you, brother, repent or you're going to die right. a horrific death if you don't come to God's law. Oh, that's us that's compelling right. you to come in, to start serving God the right way. Read. It compels them to come in. 
that my house may be filled. So God want his house filled. But he want it filled with righteous brothers and sisters. Yes. He don't want it filled with anything. We, this world, tell, I mean, the church tell you come as you are. He ain't trying to get it filled like that. You ain't coming as you are when we come from this Bible. Bring it out. This Bible going to tell you how to come. You got to come correct or don't yeah. come at all. That's right. So that's the thing that we got to we got to come back to. We got to start thinking about that. We real men. God made us men. Bring it out. He asked who going to stand up for him. But are y'all two going to make that decision today and say, see the treatment of God. We are not black men. We are the Israelites. <laughs> Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.